The RCMP is laying out changes made since the Mass Casualty Commission issued recommendations one year ago. Their report called for sweeping reforms based on the Mounties' handling of the worst mass shooting in Canadian history. In April 2020, a gunman masquerading as a police officer killed 22 people across several rural communities in Nova Scotia. He was later shot and killed by police 13 hours after the rampage began. Since then, Canada's top police force has expanded the use of its system to alert the public, deployed software to track the locations of officers out in the field, and launched a new officer training course on intimate partner violence. Mike Duem is commissioner of the RCMP. He is in Millbrook, Nova Scotia. Commissioner, welcome back to the show. It's good to speak with you. Thanks for having me. You, you told my colleague Catherine Tunney recently that the RCMP today is very different than the force that was denounced a year ago for its failings in this mass shootings. In, in your view, how has the RCMP improved and changed in the past year? Well, improving changes on, on many facets. Uh, we, we've, we've learned from what took place, and I, I, have to, I have to note that the changes or the work that was done was way before the report was actually tabled, because as the, commission, as the inquiry was unfolding, uh, we were preparing for the themes that we were seeing and whatnot and addressing and, and preparing for some of the training that's required. So you look at, uh, when, uh, you look at the alert readiness, how we, uh, how we set up nationally right now is different. Uh, we're reviewing an incident command response so that make sure that every, every member is trained the same way, the equipment, the technology. So that's what I'm saying. We're not the same RCMP that we were when the incident happened, and we're progressing. And there's a lot of good initiatives going forward uh, in the organization. We've heard this sort of thing before from the police force when things have happened. I know in the aftermath of the 2014 shootings in Moncton uh, that led to the death of three officers, uh, that, that lessons were learned and changes would be made. But there was testimony at this inquiry that while those past recommendations may have been adopted, they weren't fully communicated down to people, you know, at every level of, of the force and never communicated to the officers in particular in Nova Scotia. So, so what steps are you taking this time to avoid a repeat of those sort of systemic failures? So, so good point. And, and uh, Dennis Daly, who was with me this morning, commanding officer in Nova Scotia, he was uh, dealing with the McNeil report at the time. And, and you are right. There's recommendations that came out that uh, since things we're doing today, people probably don't even know it stemmed from the recommendation. So internally, we got to do a better job of communicating. Uh, I, I can appreciate the opening comments, the, the skepticism of, of Canadians, Nova Scotians, with regards to uh, how we're going to react to this, uh, how we're going to invoke the recommendations uh, in this one, because in the past uh, we've been uh, criticized. But I, I just want to assure everyone that we're taking an approach where uh, we brought in a new sector that's really the hub for the organization, uh, the reform, accountability, and culture, that every review will come into one single hub. And this is a permanent, permanent structure in the organization, which, which will facilitate the monitoring of the recommendations, but also the follow-up and, and improve on the communication with, with our individuals, uh, our, our frontline members. The other thing is the Progress Monitoring Committee is also up and running, and we've been there three times. They're satisfied with the progress we're, that we're doing. And let's not forget, uh, the Commission itself said in this report that change is going to take time. We just want to make sure we get it right. So uh, on, on that, the, the structural changes at, at the executive level and at the institutional level, but what about on the front line, uh, Commissioner? How are patrol officers, especially in the rural parts of Canada, how are they more prepared and better equipped uh, to deal with serious incidents like this than they were in April of 2020 or a year ago when this report came out? Well, one of the big things is, is with regards to uh, <clears throat> the technology that is uh, being used. Uh, you've heard this morning, if you listen to the conference, the uh, Blue Force t uh, tracking, which is technology that allows us to uh, monitor uh, the officers as they exit the vehicle, which we didn't have at the time. Uh, the, uh, the technology is available for everyone, and I've been to several divisions. I recently was in uh, Edmonton, and I saw it firsthand how this uh, uh, real-time operations center worked. It was pretty amazing where people go to the scene and you have a senior member in that room that can direct people to make sure that don't forget that road, don't forget this, don't forget that. So on the technology side, that's a huge plus for, for our, our, our members. But there are issues, I guess, with how they communicated with the public, how they communicated with each other, how they dealt with complex issues such as intimate partner violence, which featured so significantly in, in this particular tragedy in Nova Scotia. What are the improvements and changes yeah, yeah. there? Yeah, so on the communication front, uh, it was well known, uh, alert ready, uh, uh, there's a lot of comments about using alert ready. Uh, on the alert ready side of things, uh, it's, we have a national coordinator right now. Uh, we, it is taught at depot uh, when cadets are going through their training. 
about how to use Alert Ready. And right now, it's it's in place across the country, uh, in every province and every division in which the people are working with the territorial or provincial representatives. And there's different ways to activate in that, and that's between the commanding officers and and the respective the province or the territory's officials. Okay, you just mentioned depot, and I, I want to touch on that because one of the recommendations, and I know this is beyond your control as the commissioner, this is really a government decision, but it was recommended out of this that the RCMP needs to change the way it, it trains officers should phase out the RCMP depot and focus on a degree-based system instead of the current way you train officers. Where, where is that? Where is that conversation with government and what can we expect to see? Yeah, so the recommendation itself, it has public safety leading a consultation with provinces and territories uh, that would look at uh, implementing a three-year university degree-based police certificate uh, for all Canadian law enforcement. And uh, in Canada, we have, I think it's close to 160 law enforcement agencies that are governed by municipalities, pro uh, provinces, and, and then you have us on the federal side. So uh, that would be a response to public safety. What, what I want to share about uh, Depot, David, is, is we have changed at Depot. Uh, the average age of people coming into Depot are 29 years old. So that means they bring a diversity of experience when it comes to life or also education. 83% of our applicants have uh, some form of secondary uh, education when they apply to the organization. And actually, uh, by the time you spend your six months in training and six months uh, cadet field coach, uh, it's the equivalent of one year university. So there's good work being done. And this morning, I, I, I kind of highlighted the fact that Depo is not just a little RCMP bubble where it's just a think tank, our folks are deciding where to go. Uh, we are piloting, uh, we're not piloting, actually we are running uh, a, a test, uh, a review on uh, PTSD that is uh, being observed by our international partners. We present on the international scene. Uh, we, have, uh, we have relationships with the key uh, Canadian universities, American universities. So DEPO is changing, uh, it's changing, and uh, I think when you look at the underlying uh, message of all this is make, we, we have to change as an organization as we as we move forward. Depot is changing and I appreciate that this is being led by public safety and Minister LeBlanc would be in charge of that but if you had complete say over what happened with Depot would you keep it? Would you scrap it? Would you reform it? What would you do if it was your call? Well, I, I, I would, uh, I would, uh, I would say that uh, you look at the the current uh, structure at Depot right now. It's evolving. Our curriculum at Depot is being used in other parts of the world, which is a sign that we have a good program. Uh, the culture side, I know the culture, several reviews came back about the culture. It starts at Depot. Uh, the culture at Depot right now is we're really focusing on, on the renewed core values of the organization. And uh, again, you look at the diversity that's coming in. I was there in December, and out of the troop of 32, there's 12 people that were not born in Canada. It just shows the diversity that's coming in. I've never seen it, and I think as the years to come, you're going to see that shift. It, it's, we, we, we have a, a really good, solid platform, but like I said, we've got to learn and make sure we get better. You said uh, depot needs to change. You also said the police force needs to change. And I wonder about this larger question, Commissioner, on the RCMP's mandate of doing community policing through contract policing, in, in, in some cases to, to the high-level crime, everything from traffic to human trafficking. I mean, there have been calls for an independent review uh, of the police force's mandate. Where, where does that stand? Do you think the focus and purpose of the RCMP ne needs an overhaul in, in the wake of all of this? Yeah, and, and you, you know you're in Ottawa. We've seen it several times with regards to uh, the, the scope of mandate of the RCMP is too broad and whatnot. I'm here to tell you that we have uh, three key mandates. That's federal policing, contract, contract and Indigenous policing, and then uh, special police services, which, uh, you know what, uh, those are the three key mandates. And again, if, if a province or municipality uh, wants to look at uh, different uh, police force, uh, our role in that is really to sit down uh, given the information that's required to make an informed decision. And uh, I, I got to remind you as well, and, and you're probably aware of this, that uh, when it comes to contracts with the provinces and municipalities, it's, it's not the RCMP that negotiates the contract. It would be public mm -hmm. safety. So for the time being, our recruiting numbers are up. Uh, we're doing a good job. Uh, so right now we're pushing forward on those three key mandates. Okay, just as a final question, uh, uh, Commissioner, there are more than 100 recommendations in the report. I know the RCMP only has, I think, direct responsibility for about 33 of them, give or take. What's the timeline to get them all done, to get them implemented and respond to it? So, uh, quite frankly, David, I would love to have them all in place by tomorrow. Uh, the reality is, and it's, it's documented in the report, that change of this nature will take time. Mm. 
and we want to make sure that we get this right. We want to rebuild the trust and confidence from Canadians with regards to our, our institution, the RCMP, and we just want to make sure that we're transparent and people can hold us accountable from the mechanisms that we have in place. I, I know you're here kind of on an interim basis. Do you think you can get this all done before your time in the job is up, or do you think this is something your successor is going to have to finish? Well, I'm here for my order in council is good for another year. And uh, if you followed my uh, my path uh, as a senior officer, I, I like to shake things up. I, I we have to be more nimbler, nimble, and uh, we have to uh, we have to reflect what's today rea today's reality is all about and change. RCMP Commissioner Mike Dam, thank you so much for your time today, sir. Thanks for having me.